Welcome back to part two of our broadside attack. Now just to recap what we're doing, the broadside part is this section and this is the bombardment that the ship will fire through and that's the area that we're working on this clip. Now if you jump straight into this clip you need to go back and look at clip one so it's a bit more of a breakdown what we're trying to achieve but we're having it where it bombards a particular ship at the moment so when you fire it across, and this is just a little demo version that I've done, one of my testers to check if it works, just to show you the bombardment works. Now when we blow up a ship, we're then going to move on to the next level and show how that works. But we're concentrating in this clip and we're going to go through all the aspects of how to get those missiles to fire across uh, the bow of the ship. So that's the plan. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have it going across. Now, like I mentioned before, we're doing it four times. There's going to be four places it stops halfway. You could just have the ships left in station. I mean, it makes their life easier. But I wanted to make sure that we're rotating around. And, we, and the reason for the rotation was to let you know that one person just won one round and the other person won the other round, this round. So that is what we're going to do and we're concentrating on this section. Yeah, and that's how it goes. Now just a recap of the whole game, but we're focusing on this particular part, those those flying bombs. That's what we're going to be working on. But let me just do a quick reminder again from that last clip what we're doing. You see our total objective is based on the gameplay where it's a two player game where we have to collect some uh, tools yeah. when we collect tool 3 let's grab all these once you've got all the tools you get three of them it's going to activate our cannon right and our cannons become active and then we do it now there is a bug with these cannons uh, and I'll explain that in our clips 3 and 4 in fact I think it's actually in clip 4 on this but this is the second part of the um, the second part of the uh, broadside attack. The other two clips are named "How to Arm Your Cannons." So I've I've broken them in two separate uh, items, just so people keep watching them. Because I found that when I did a series, like I did a, a clip on seven series, not a lot of people tend to watch those. So what I thought well here is if I just do them in in two parters, they're all together but then you can pick which elements that you require on this screen but once you've shot all the targets those targets are hit the system will then automatically trigger the, the attack so we now need to set the attack up before we even set our targets up so that is the, what we're going to be working on now uh, and this bit's relatively straightforward okay so let's jump straight into that one now we've got my ships in position already so I've lined them all up now uh, when I recall this on the PlayStation, you can only record in segments of 15 minutes, and I classically made a complete mess up of it and missed the first three minutes, so I had to redo this all again. That's the dedication I do for you, for you guys for these clips. Right, you'll see in here I'm just moving this little side panel out because I'm going to use this button here to be my trigger. So I'm bringing this button across, and if you saw the end of my first clip, these four buttons were already created. So this is where we make these four buttons. Yeah. And those four buttons, when we press them, we'll, we'll test to see if those cannons are working or not on our screen. Okay, so we've got those all ready now. So when we press those, we can do it. We're going to fire from this side of the ship all the way across to this side and vice versa. Now, one thing we want to do is we want to make a nice kind of arc. So we can use the path tool in an arc, in an arc formation. But before we do that, we're going to grab a little uh, component to help us with this. So what I've got here is I'm going to get rid of my creativity toys and I was looking at to have some sort of object to pinpoint where I want to be the centre of my arch. Yeah. So I was going to use one of these locators but then I found the locator was too small but I was going to try and work out where roughly do I want the centre, where do I reach the, the centre of the boat. So I'm trying to look for the centre part and get that curve right. So the locator was too small. Okay. So what we're going to do here is if I go down one, I'm going to actually go into my objects and pick a big large circle. This is going to be deleted out, it's purely again to help me line up these ships. Okay, I want to try and get a, a nice curved arc. So I'm just going to pick one of these big, big giant circles just to highlight that is the path that I want to take. Yeah, it gives me an idea that that should be somewhere in the middle. Let's have a look. It's close to it, it doesn't have to be perfect, just to try and get me that, that archway is what I want to do. So you now see that I've gone to the path tool. And I've gone to my boat. My boat is already lined up, ready to position, yeah, on my first point. And I'm now going to set it across. Now, look at the points that we do here because you can do a number of these. 
So I'm going to start along the water and then we're going to go up. So I'm going to put it toward near the back of the boat but not outside. It's got to be inside the boat because the ball's going to appear next to it and I don't want the, to see it. So I'm going to do it slightly coming up at an angle. So I've done the first point in and more to just watch them re repeat the same path. We're just going to try and get this path across. So I want three of these inside the boat before we even get going out. So, so make sure you've got three of these inside it. It's important to have three inside. Yeah. Think, do you think I've said three enough times there? So have you got it? Three points inside. And now we're going to get the points up. Now again, this just comes with practice and it comes with tweaking it. And you're going to see here, I'm now going to try and keep the arc up. But as you see, I don't want it to bend forward. So I've got to look like it comes up so it gives you that nice arch. So I'm constantly trying to keep it in a straight line. I'm trying to work out right, how high do I need to go. Can't even see the flipping circle. There you go. So again, try and get the arch that I wanted. And like I say, the first time I did this, I had a perfect curve, and I didn't even use the circle. And then it just missed the first two minutes of the clip, so I had to redo the whole thing again. Wasn't too impressed. But let's just keep moving this through. Right, so now you see it's just still coming up, and now we're going to get that. We're, they can't bend upwards. It's got to be a straight shot like a cannonball, so make sure that now you see we're getting to the top. See, look, that's, you can see it's just... The cannonball is not going to go too nice. So if you press triangle, you can undo an option and adjust it. So you'll see here that I need to really start getting the curve occurring. Now, until you start putting the other point in, you'll see that it sometimes goes up, but it'll actually start, once it's going down, it'll put the curve in place. I need to must keep, and also keep it straight. You'll see I went off there at an angle, so always try and keep it straight. And that's now a lot better. I'm getting an arch, and as you start moving down, it comes down on the list. And obviously I need to make sure I aim for it to hit the boat. Now it doesn't go right into the ground, it's just going to stop the first part of the boat. So we're just going to try and line that up. And you see we're coming down, coming down on the boat. Keep it straight. Now I want it to, just before it touches it, I don't want it to explode above the boat because that look a bit pants when you when it plays back. So it's a little bit further, a little bit further. There we go. I'm happy with that. Just catches there at the end. So I don't want it to bend up either. Right, so I put it there and then I'll come inside. Make sure I line it up. I can't see it, but there it is. There's the two. I don't really want it to go into water, but you'll see here I've got at least two inside the boat, but not touching the bottom. So that is my first path done. Right, so that's the first miss I'm going to go on. Now again, you can make your life simple by just doing one path. You don't have to have five. Yeah, and you can see the arch going from one side to the next. Now I did I did this and I did five, five tools, but like I say, you don't have to do five. But we're now lined up. Now because it's lined up, you're going to line it up perfectly exactly the same. So you'll see here, I've moved it two across, and I'm going to marry it straight across to make my life so much easier. So once you've got to spend the time on the first one, the other one is not that bad. Okay, none of this is complicated, you've got to admit, this is just straightforward, using the path tool, linking it through. It's how to arm your cannons where it gets a little bit tough, but I don't want to scare you, you can do it. Now my final backup plan, if no one at E3 actually releases any uh, similar or different style to creative game like this. All those uh, young kids that are watching this, in a few years' time, you'll be you'll be looking for careers, and you want to become a game developer. As soon as you come as a game developer, and you do, and you and you remember these clips. Remember, if they haven't created a new Disney Infinity, go and build one. Okay, get that done. There's a market there. Someone's going to make some money on it. So, while the big boys seem to have given up on it, I don't mind waiting. I waited a long time for Battlefront. And it looks finally at the end of this year they're going to get it about a bang on now. Right. So here you'll see I'm trying to line them all up, make sure it goes on, and I'll get that go back down. Though I need this to make sure it hits the boat, I don't need it to go short beforehand. It's going to be a little bit, so I might just adjust it slightly. There we go. And again, two inside the boat.
there we go now that I've got the arc going in quite nicely I can circle out of that I'm going to go and do the other three I don't need I might have to move that I don't need the uh, blue circle so I'm going to get rid of that and I'm now going to finish the other arcs so let's do a little bit of editing now where I'm going to jump forward a bit for some of the work I did earlier but you, you, I'm going to do five lines I'm going to repeat that uh, th th uh, three more times so you'll see there's the fourth one I'm just doing the last one now I've gone back to the, the first one I did and if you have a look at this clip of the first one look at that line it was a lot better line if you see how it goes came out better from the boat but the curve on this one was a lot better so I'm just I wanted to make sure I've got the, this one back in just to show you I did it okay A slightly better, I thought it was just a better curve on this one. Okay, so we put this all down. Now, at some point, you're going to need to do it on the other side, uh, and we need to do a returning attack. This is purely for one side of the attack to occur. Yeah. So although I've done the, the lines for the missiles coming this way, I'm going to have to create five new paths, yeah, going back the same way, yeah. So in total, all right, for each side, yeah, I'm going to need five there, five back. On the other side, five there, five back. But there we go. We've got our now path all done. So we now have our path all set up, which is perfectly. So what I'm going to need to do is get the ship out of the way so I can now put the logic on front of that boat because at the moment we can't do any logic because the boat's in the way. So what I need to do now is get rid of the boat so we can now put on the firing uh, bombs. So I've returned to the island and what we'll do is I'll just go back into the one mode and you'll see here there's the arc with the nice curvature going across and that's where we're going to fire the cannons and they're going to shoot across to the other side and explode and this is the same effect you can use if you want to use cannon fire if you want to use a catapult or same scenario so for us to do the effect we're going to have to move the boat so I'm going to press the button once and they will now sail round leaving us that path alone uh, in the final clip you're not going to be able to land on the water you're going to die I may have mentioned this already you'll, sometimes you'll find I'll mention this again Right, so we've got our route, we know our path starts, there's our green line there, and it's going to fire those particular objects. So there are a number of things that we need to create this, so let's prepare these all up. Uh, and if you find you can't place these objects on the list, you just move them further back because it registers there's a boat there on the screen. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is some locators. Okay, I need a single locator per path, so we're going to go across those and put those on each one. Okay. We're also going to need, as we go back through this, we're going to need um, some effects generators. We're going to need two of these. And we're going to need effects generators. We need two per path. Yep, so there's two. So we're setting these all up. And we're going to do all five in one go, by the way. Okay, so there's those set up. And again, these, these positions are not a problem where they're going to be because we're going to move them away when we finish. So we're going to need a logic gate as well. So we need a logic gate on here. So here's a logic gate. Move these across. So again, one logic gate per path. Oops, I moved that wrong. Just going to move that back. Okay, so we know our logic gates. We're also going to need some uh, collectible objects which is the explosion thing so we're going to go down to our objects and I'm going to use the one that looks like a missile with little guides on them and I need five of those as well so I'm just going to place them above my locators now the locator is to have an, a fire effect and the explosion these objects are just to look like cannonballs so I'm, that's why I'm using those ones okay so there's our objects okay and we need this logic gate and this logic gate is going to be used on all the paths because what we're going to do is that we don't need these balls to, as you'll see the targets are going to be floating on the air and I'm going to use this to hide all these path tools here so all these are going to be hidden from this and I'll move that around but I'll come back to that a bit later on to explain it right let's go to the first path and pick the first point after the green thing and we're going to say when point reaches the path we're going to point it to the logic gate and we're going to input a signal to it 
And on that logic gate, we're going to say, right, while you're open, on output, so you input a signal from that point, can we go to the path and can we reset it? So we're going to go there, can you do reset and play? Okay. So we'll do this for every single line. So the first point after the green one, you're going to do new logic connection when point reaches on path. We're going to go back, we we'll go to the logic gate, which is in line with that path. We're going to input a signal. Now the default logic gates are, out, are open, so when it outputs, we're going to tell it to reset and we're going to do reset and play and that's going to set it on there. Now what that's going to do is that is going to create a loop for our objects to stay in there until we want this to happen. So we're going to do this on every path go on the screen. Now to trigger the explosion all we've got to do are close those five gates and when we close those five gates that will then have the objects carry on moving up through the rest of the screen. So it's important that we have that set yeah, and you do it for every single one. So the first point after the green one, yeah, we say, right, new logic connection. When point reached on path, point it back to the logic gate and input a signal. And then from the logic gate on output, so new logic connection on output, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to reset and play. Not reset and stop, reset and play. We never turn off the path. Don't do that at all. Yeah, so do this for the last one. There we go, reset and play. So we've now set up all the logic for all these gates. So unpot reset. So that now sets that up. So we've got a loop going to call it constantly refreshes those loops. And if we check on those paths, you'll see the connections on there. So all those are connected up. So that is our first point. Now what's going to happen is once we've actually close those gates that those pointers are going to move across on these paths so we're going to connect these pointers to them but before we do that and before you connect any of the objects to the path we're going to link those locators to the effects generator so you'll see here I'm doing new logic connection locator connection and link it to the both those uh, effects generators so each one each, well, each locator is connected to both effects generators so on there new locator connection and point to each effects generator. Okay, we do not, and this is stressing this point, you do not connect any of the uh, locators or the orbs to the path until we've done all the connections because it's going so quickly you won't be able to do it. So the rule is do not connect them to the path until the very last thing, otherwise, you just won't be able to reach it on the screen. So each locator, make sure every though each one of those locators is located to both of the corresponding effects generator. So new locator connection, connect them up. Now also I've chosen five. You could have just done one of these by the way. You don't actually have to have five runs. So if you want to test this out, just do a small one on its own. Yeah, Just do one option and then see how many you want to do. Uh, I think if we do any more than five you really are going to struggle with the memory because it doesn't end up being five. There's five this side, there's five the other side, and there's five of the four quarters. So it ends up being 20 in the end. So it, it can be quite complicated on the screen. So what I'm just going to do now is just check each locator has two points, which they do. So they have two on it, which is good. So now we've got all those set up. What we're going to do now is set the speed of the paths. So I'm now going to click on the path section. And I'm going to change it because the default for a path is 100. And I want them to travel to quite some speed. So you see I've already done this on the screen because you'll find that in my video I did I messed this all up so I had to redo the whole thing again just to show you but I've set these paths to all be 300 so can you make sure you go to the properties of the path and make sure you set the speed all to 300 they're all currently set to 100 and all you got to do is that's the only setting you have to change with the path and that just sets them all to 300 so I'm just going through the process so you can see how this works okay so all of these now will be set to 300 yeah so you do every one of the five to 300 right now that there is stuck in a loop until we close the gate. So once our counter gets to this point, they are now traveling. It's now traveling on the screen. So what we can say is, right, when point reached on path, yeah, now we've, we've opened the gate and we've gone past it's going to go. What we're going to do is we're going to do our first uh, effects generator. We're going to say, right, can we play on a looped scenario? And what we're going to do is we're going to choose fire and we're going to choose the blaze fire. Now to start with, I was just going to have a fireball and that would be a big giant fireball but the thing is the distance we've got is too far and what happens is as it travels across through the side it disappears and you can't see it so that's why I needed to put a big giant orb in as well so it now looks like there's fire the fire trailing from the actual object so this is the second point along the path the first one is stuck in a loop 
And the second point means once our object gets to there, we are now traveling through. So we're going to say on there, when we reach the point, can we go to the corresponding uh, effects generator? We're picking the first one next to the logic. And can we do play looped? Can we do the uh, fire? And it's a blaze fire. Now remember, that p when we connect the locator to the path, it's going to be stuck in a loop until we close the gate. When we close the gate, it won't then tell it to repeat, and then it will carry on the rest of the path. So we set this all up. And I'm doing five here, and it doesn't take that long. I think it takes about ten minutes to do the whole thing, on just for this one particular travel. Admittedly, we have to do this four times. Yeah, but we're doing in this one go. We're doing five runs. Yeah, so we click on this object, and we set that. Okay, so in there, we've set these all up. And again, you play looped. I want fire, and we've got the fire on screen. So that now sets the fire up perfectly. Can you play that on a continuous loop? So we're going to have a ball of five going from that particular object, which is quite good. Yeah. And I'm just checking there. There are two connectors to that one, one to the locator and one to the path, which is brilliant. Now, at the same point here, when we get to that point, right, we're still inside the ship because we marked that out inside the ship. So what we're going to say here is, as we're just just before we get to be on show, when we reach that point to then, so when you point, reach on the path, not only are we going to set the fire going, can you make that orb visible so we're going to set it to reset At the, when we finish this game off we, it's going to be invisible so you can't see it but what we say is right we're still inside the boat because we know that's the position of the boat but when it reaches that point can you now turn the orb on so the orb's going to appear with the locator and the fire is going to travel up through the sky I'll do that so I'll do it for each one so this is all on the second so we've got the green one first one the first one after the green one we do the loop and then the next one we say right do the fire in blaze switch on and can you make the orb visible as well and at the same time we're going to connect these orbs to the path at the moment at this particular stage okay so can you reset those so all there they're now re reset so on that point we have two points which which is those on so we now have our orb with the firing balls taken off from the screen which is quite good so that there on the screen with the screen now on the third one once we've got to this point, we're going to say, right, when you get to this point, we're going. But I don't want to fire it again. It's only going to fire it once. So what I'm going to do is, can you reopen the gate? So to trigger this thing off, all we've got to do are close these gates. And if we close the gate, that will fire the cannon. But once it's fired, we're then going to say, as it goes through, can you, as it goes past the thing, right, can you then go back and close it? So it automatically switches itself off. So well, otherwise, it'll just carry on firing bombardment after bombardment. So if we don't have this option here, it will never stop firing cannons. It'll just go to the other end, come back and refire them again. Yeah, so in this case, this, this control point here, what we do here is every time we get to the third one after the green one, we go back to our logic gate and we set it to open, not close, we set it to open. Okay, so just remember, it feels a bit weird because we haven't set them off yet, but what we say is when we get to this point, we presume that the thing has started, so go back to the logic gate and set it to open. Now the last thing we do is actually when we when we set this all up, oh, we're going to close the gates and that's what's going to trigger it off, but it's a clever way of doing that, so we'll show you that in a bit as well. So I'm just checking we've got all these on, so that's linked to two, that's linked to two, and have we done the last one? Last one, so third option again. When we get to that point, that's so I mean, this is just to check that I've done them all. So this one here, when we get to this point, in point reached on path, can we open this gate? Okay, so that's now open. So they're all open on the set, so we now have, we trigger it off, they go through, the fire comes on, we show the balls and then they'll start traveling along in the air through the other side of the screen. So we're now going to do what happens when we get to the other side. Now when we put these in, the third point is the, the actual part, top part of the ship. Okay, when we measured out, we did the point of the ship and then we did two underneath it. Okay, so what we're saying is that when we reach this point here, we've, we've hit the ship. So in this case, when we reach this point, can we have an explosion? So what we're going to say now is, we'll do a new logic connection on that point. And we're going to say when point reached, yeah, we're going to link that back to our effect generator. So, so new logic connection, when point reached on path, can we go all the way back? And we're going to go now to the first effects generator, the separate one. And to get the big explosion, you can only play it once. So do play once this time, not play and loot. Play once, and can you do explosions and huge. That's the only way you're going to get that huge explosion on that screen. You don't get that under the looped effect. 
So it's the third one. So we go across here. I've done the first one. So we go to the next one. So the third option across just before the end. New logic connection. When point reached the path, go to our second effect generator, which we haven't set up yet in there. And we then play uh, play once, play explosion, and do a huge explosion. That option is only available under that route. And we now have to do every single one on the third route. So I've done that. Now I'm just checking I've done it. I'm going to line up. I'm going to pull these across. Now, when you come to do this, I'm saying it's, this is this is probably one of the most complicated ones we've done. It very simple little ruse, but it's going to get very messy when we add all the other stuff in. So you'll see that I've lined everything up, kept it all organised for you in a way. So you need to do exactly the same type of method, so you don't get lost or distracted, and you can do one item at a time. Okay, but this shows you how this one path will trigger different stages to these effects. It's quite a cool little uh, thing. And like I say, you don't have to use it as ships. You could use this as, as a. Uh, I was going to use the same idea for a, a war theme, like a Game of Thrones or um, Lord of the Rings type thing, where we have cannons firing things on walls. But we'll work. We're working on these. Now, obviously, in my clips, I always want to try and show you something new that I haven't done before. So I'm loving the fact you keep chucking all your ideas in, so chuck them all in on them and keep my ideas. Some of you have chucked in some good ones recently. Uh, and if you give me an idea that I can express something new in a way, I will definitely do it. Now, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep as many clips coming throughout the year, and I'll keep doing that. But they take a while for obviously me to test them, make sure I can then do them into a video and show them to you guys. So sometimes you'll see I'll, you'll be like a a big load of video clips and then there's like a couple of weeks gap and then there'll be a couple of clips so definitely subscribe so you don't miss out any new posts that I do uh, so you get to see these ones here so I'm just going through all these items right now now I've set all those up what we do is after we've got past that explosion so on the second to last one what we can say now is we've finished we've hit the boat so what can we do now is can we actually now switch off those orbs yeah so I'm doing the opposite effect here is on the one just before the end, the explosion's gone above before it, but we're saying now that we're inside the boat, the balls inside, can we now make them disappear? So it looks like they've destroyed the boat, so can we now do the opposite, and can we hide the orbs? Yeah, so the one after that option there, click on that option, when point reached on path, can we switch the item off there, and can we hide it? Right, as you see, so it's a second option just before the very end. So we've got the first one does the explosion, the one but after that, which is the, the second to last one, that will then say, right, can you hide that explosion? Okay, so we have to hide, we have to hide, but not hide it, but hide the orb so it looks like it's hit the boat and broken into pieces and sunk to the bottom of the water. So that's what we don't want to see on there. So we're making sure they switch off. Yeah, so when, when, they, when we reach that point, can we hide those? Now, the other thing is, not only are those orbs going to be connected to the path, but the locators are, and those locators are on fire as well. So we've now just checking each one of those has got two connections, one to make it visible and one to switch it off. Yeah, We now need the same for the other path. So on the same point, when point reached on path, yeah, we're going to do the other one. So when point reached on path, can we switch off our loop effect, which is the first option. So the very first one where we've got the blazing fire, can we switch off that effect? So can you stop looping effect? And the reason why we need to switch it off is that when we get when the ships move round, you don't want to look like there's objects floating in the air. So we have to make sure it looks like they're not they're coming from the ship. And I'll explain that again as we come through. So again, same option again as we've done the same option where we hide the orb. Now we're going to say stop the looping effect. And I've got to do that on all these options. So on the second one from the end, when point reached on path. Go to the first looping effect, which is looped. And these last two little connections, so there's three here. You've got the one above it, which does the explosion, and then these two connections on this one point hide them all back off again. That is really our, our explosion ready to go. All we then need to do is create a trigger. And I'm going to create a little clever little trigger like I did with my uh, ATAT clip. I need two on there, new logic connection, when point reached on path, go to my effects generator, make sure it's the second one, and say stop looping effects. 
Okay, perfect. So that now has got that all set up. These have all got two points to them. One to switch on the fire, one to switch it off, and they're connected to a locator. So I'm happy with that. So far, so good. Now, when you create these orbs, they are going to appear floating against the water because we're going to link these orbs to the path in a moment. Yeah. And what we're going to find is, when, before we do that, they are going to be on show all scattered around the water. So this logic gate here is only going to be used at the beginning of the game. And on my level starter, I'm going to input a signal into that and say, right, on output from this port, can we hide all these five uh, orbs? So I'm going to go, can you hide them? Now that one logic gate is then going to be moved around for all the other sets of paths. And I'm going to link all those orbs to those. So actually there's going to be 20 orbs linked to this one logic gate. All right, so I'm just going to do this for this set at the moment, and I'll, when I move across, I'll, I'll mention that at the time. But on the output of this this logic gate, what's going to happen here is when it on output, it's going to then hide those orbs. So when the game loads up, the orbs will be on display after two seconds of loading, they'll all disappear. When we trigger them, the orbs will appear, explode, land, and then reset and disappear again. So I only need this really at the beginning of the game when it loads up. So on output, can I make those orbs disappear on the screen? And I will set that link up later to show you that working. Okay, so I set that up on the screen, which is cool. And we have them all done now. That's it done. Okay, so they're all now connected up. When, when we put a signal, can you hide all those? So we have now set up all the logic for the orbs and all the logic for the locators. So therefore, we can now add those to the path. So if I point to the locator, if I can actually get onto it again, on the locator, can we then do new path connection, link it to the path, and now connect it. Now the reason why we didn't do it till now is because of the speed and look at the thing, it's traveling way too fast to see it. But we're going to do that to all those particular items. And that's going to stay in that loop, because like I mentioned, that first point, yeah, says when it gets there, go to the logic gate. If it's open, which it will be, reset the whole thing again. So it goes through that loop and keeps going through. So every locator we're going to connect to the path. Okay, so we do that. Cool. Now remember, this is all happening inside the ship, so you won't get to see it. And I need to do the exactly the same with the path. Now, for some reason I went wrong here. I did new logic connection, and then it went a long way around to find the path. What I should have chosen was new path connection. Yeah, and because I get that flickering light on the screen, that's why I shouldn't have done. By chance, I get it right, so new path connection, which I get it connected to the right one. But what I should have done is, is choose the orb and gone to new path connection, and then it's only looking for the path tool. So, my mistake, I clicked on the wrong one to start with. Toy box path, they're all connected up, and we're going to link those up on the screen. Now, that once we've got that finished, that is everything done with the trigger, right? That's the, not the trigger, sorry, that's everything done with the actual catapult and the explosion. So, the next thing we have to create is the trigger that fires that item off. Yeah, the what what actually starts that all off. So let's link all these paths up. Okay, so we've got this done. I'm happy with that. That is now finished. Last one to do. And like I said, you could use all five or use four on the screen. So what we're going to do now is all those logic gates we can move out the way. Yeah, let's bring them out the side. We've got that one to reset it when it loads up. But on these path tools here, we're going to move them and out the side and hide them. So what I'm going to do is go back underneath the water and click on the terrain option. So I'm just going to move ourselves back down to the ground. Now that terrain I've already got, so to instead of select it, if you select it and click it, it will highlight it and then set it. And then I can get another box and it defaults to that group. So I'm just going to put another path tool here, sorry, another terrain box here. And then I'm going to move all those objects down on the screen. So what I'm going to do is just to move them out of the way and keep them in that order. Yeah, keep everything uniformed and in that, that layout so it's easy to track and trace when we come back to it. So I'm now going to move that down on the screen, which is quite good. Right, as I move these through. Now, as I start moving these through, I noticed that when I did these clips, um, you'll see that you, they're obviously they're, they're all roughly about an hour long. Uh, so I've had to do a bit of editing, and but at the start of the editing, I was hoping to have these all out before E3 started. And so sadly, E3 has now been and gone. Uh, and they still do the review. So there's been quite a few good games reviewed. The new Spider-Man game looks absolutely awesome. Uh, I was a big fan of the crew. I love the crew game. 
I love driving games, but I thought that was really good. Uh, so there's quite a few good ones that I thought on show, and I'm, as you're aware, a big Star Wars fan, and I thought Battlefront 2 looked great as well. So there's some good games, but sadly there were no creative games. No one showed you any new uh, building games that you could design your own games with. So I was a little bit disappointed on there. There's a, a company by Media Monocle, they're doing a game called Dreams, uh, and that is definitely a, something for you to create something similar to this line. Not as uh, Disney Infinity, but definitely you'd be able to create your own games. But nothing on them, so very quiet. So hopefully Gamescom, but there's nothing nothing new on the horizon at the moment. Which means, which is probably a good thing, which means I'm just going to have to carry on doing Disney Infinity clips. So I'm still going to keep pushing these on. And I, I may have mentioned this already, I, I, can't, I keep looking track when I keep editing these clips. But... These, they take a while for me to put together, so just bear with me. You may find you have an influx of uh, clips, and then there's a gap for a couple of weeks, maybe two, three weeks, and then you'll, you know more clips are coming. I will, just as a promise, have clips throughout the rest of this year. Okay, And if they don't ever release anything like Disney Infinity again, then I'll just carry on doing it. But I'm always trying to find something that I haven't shown you before, something you can mix up together. Uh, so keep chucking ideas. All the ideas that you chuck in will be... You'd be amazed to bring me other ideas. Oh, I could do this or I could mix that one. Someone's asked for a chase, chase scene and I've got a couple of ideas with that. So I'm, I'm work, I've got these little things to play around with while I play all the other various driving games I like to do. Right. So we've now got all these positions here out of the way. I'll move this last one. This is all looking good. And there we go. That is us now all set. So these are the logic gates here. These gates here all open, and when we close those gates, they are going to then make those balls move past that, and then they all set there where they become visible, explode, and land on the screen. So we need something to control those gates. So we're going to create one more logic gate. Now this logic gate is what triggers the uh, the bombardment. Okay. So I am going to now need another path tool. Yeah, so there for each one of these, so six in total. So let's grab my other path tool. But this one doesn't need to be on show, so I'm going to hide this down here on the screen. Okay, now I have one point here. The first point is my loop section. Okay, and then after that, we're going to do it every two squares. I need another six, so I need uh, so the first one, and then obviously five points um, regarding for each section. And then the other thing I need is a locator. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to do when we reach the first point, just like we did with the uh, the bombardment section, we're going to input a signal into this new logic gate we just added. And on output there, just like before, can we reset and play that loop? Now I've done this before again in the, in the attack clip, it's a good way of firing things through. I've also done it on my atom bomb clip as well. Right. Okay, so we've got that loop on the screen. So that just loops there on, the, on that list. Right, and the properties of that, I'm going to change the properties to about 200. So the speed of it's 200. I want them just a little bit staggered between. I don't want them all too quickly. If it's too fast, you'll see them all screen. Now nothing's connected. There's no effect to this locator, so I'm just going to add this locator now. The locator is purely my like my trigger. So all I need to do now is when I close this gate, yeah, when I close that gate, that locator is now going to carry on moving down the path. So when it comes to the first point, we're going to say, right, when point reached on path, what we're going to do then is, we're going to say, right, can you now go and close one of these gates? So I'm going to close those gates. Now I'm going to do these out of sequence, so it gives you a, an effect like it's a volley. So on the next point, I'm going to do, can we fire this one? So can we close this gate? And on the next point, can we, and so I'll make sure all five are connected. Now remember, when they are fired, as it goes through, it what the fourth point along comes back to those logic gates and reopens them again yeah so that's like my opposite op option so I'm making sure all these are connected there we go so on there new logic gates when, when point reach on there can we close the gates now one thing we need to do then also it's great all these now are going to be open depending on which gate you'll see they're all connected at different stages as the thing travels along the line but one thing we need to do is that after we've got this point that come across, so we do one more new logic connection when point reached on path, can we reopen the trigger? Otherwise it's going to fire them again. Yeah? And that's got it. So all we've got to do now is to launch these things, is input a signal into that logic gate. That's all we've got to do. So we go over here. So these travel across here. 
but when they reach those points on the path that's when it triggers across so in our little four diamond buttons here just as our test example I'm going to say on this button here when we press this button test it and in our final game we'll get rid of these so on pressed what we're going to say is right can we all we've got to do is one thing and is close that gate and then once we do that the rest will automatically open and close itself and trigger the buttons okay so we have now got that set that will do our logic then that's that path done so what I'm going to do now is take this logic gate here and move this to the other side right we have that all now set up and done right we've created the bombardment that is your bombardment complete and I need that logic gate to hide the other set of orbs when we get around to doing there so what do I need to do now well I need to go back to the island and I now need to move the ships around to do the bomb bombardment back on the other side so I'm going to now change back to my character okay good old Davy Jones and I'm going to move the ships back so as you can see they load up there on the screen and when they load up you'll see them flashing so I want them to be when we load up to not be shown but let's move the boats back okay so let's go back into our um, one moment now let's get the ships in dun, dun, dun. so our ships there are linked on the screen there you go they're all perfectly connected so when I press that button it triggers them across there they go all the way across they hit the boat and there's a good arc you don't see them look like they're moving up and down and they explode up and then they all get switched off and hidden and everything stops yeah and when you press the button again it'll do the same thing just get so you can press it again trigger it off again sorted and it goes one way and we're trying to make the arc as nice and smooth across on the screen and all that was for that one effect yeah so let's just move it back round again now this is just to prove a point now that they have been launched and been fired you now can't see the orbs so as you'll see now as you go round look there are no jumping orbs they've, they've disappeared it's all gone there is nothing there because everything's invisible so when I put my one mode back on you'll now see the orbs are there but they are now invisible with set so that first that gate that I moved across the other side is needed right and we need that option to make sure we hide it after the actual option loads up now what like I mentioned we were going to do earlier is we now need to move those objects back so we've got these firing this side we now the opposite what if the other teammate get their orbs done we need to fire it back yeah so what we need to do now is we need to go into here and we need to send the the launcher back so we've got the, the one set where we now need to do it the other way so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my path creator tool and I'm then going to go back and put the path back now remember we start at the bottom when it ends it's at halfway up because we've got to hit the ship so I'm going to go back to my path creator okay I'm then going to go into this little ship here so we have these hit exploded so I'm going to go slightly to one side so we've got there this is where they come in at so I'm just lining up to the other side now if we look at this when we come in we're actually off center so actually I don't want to do it from there I'm going to do it slightly in so on this side it wants to be across so I'm actually going to do it from so there's that line I'm going to do it in the middle of this box so straight down to the bottom line it to the very bottom go back right so now I want to do my objective slightly less so I'm going to bring it out so I'm going to bring out two points so I need two points inside the ship so there's one okay there's the other one Right, now remember it's got to be going up and I've got to keep it straight okay inside the bit it doesn't matter if it really bends inside the ship but now I've got to bring it up so now I've got to pull this up try not to bend it if it bends too much it's going to look like it bobbles through the air so you've got to try and keep it straight so I can line it up but this is a slightly different trajectory again if you make if you click it in the wrong place press the triangle to undo the point and you can reset it so you'll see here look that's curving already so no I need to go a little bit higher Nope, see, that's better. That's better. Sometimes you mean it's further across. Let's go a bit higher now. What's that? So that's curving already. So that's coming down. That's wrong. So I need to go up higher. That's 
well, that's not too bad. Yeah. No, it's not because it's going to make it too rigid. I'm going to undo that. It's too hard. Let's go back. Let's undo, press the triangle to undo. In fact, if I now line it up with those, I think I could be. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now, if I go across, that should now. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's look. Let's keep it smooth. Now we can bring it back down, and now we can land on top of the deck. So a little bit lower. Well, that's too much. Yeah, let's keep it now in line. So that's quite good. So we're now doing the path back. So we're doing exactly what we did earlier at the beginning of this clip, but we're doing the reverse side to it now. Yeah. So everything we've set up in this clip, yeah, is to get the bombs going across, get the lines tall. We're now doing everything back in reverse. And we're going to make sure it hit the boat. There we go. It hits the, hits the whole section on here. So after it hits the deck, I need two more points after there. But make sure this doesn't go right down to the ground. But two points. Let's bring it in. Remember, it's in the middle bit. Well, so we're making sure I'm lining it up. You can see I'm just playing around. So there's the first one. Doink. I'll have one more. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I can a circle like that, and we can go and do the next one. Now, the next one's a lot easier because I'm going to match the exact same points for the other line. So we're going to move all the way back to the ship. And we take the path down. And now, second line across where the first point is. So we move two across. So we're in between the two. So we never do it on the top of the same one so they, don't, they can't get in the way. And now I just match up the points, keeping them in a straight line. And it's a lot quicker to do because I've already got the first one. So the first one's a bit that is the painstaking, but the other five after that will be straightforward. And you see they all link up quite nicely. And we follow this all the way across to the other side, matching each of the points up for the return journey. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do it the other side as well. So we're going to have five going across the other way from left to right and the other way back and forth. And then we're going to connect up all the logic as well. So on this side, once we do that, we're going to repeat the same clip again. We're going to have the five orbs, the five locators, the uh, five logic gates, the ten uh, effects generators, so we're going to put all that to link those items back. Now with a bit of editing now I'm just going to speed through this and look like we've already done it so we're going to set those up and we're going to set the exact same logic to all these items as well so why set this up I'm going to speed through and show you what it now looks like after we finished it all. So there we go we have now two sets either side so I've got there my two attack and there's the other side on the screen so they're all now set up on my boat, yeah. Each set has my five orbs inside. As you can see, you can see the five orbs hidden there. They're they're linked through, yeah. And I've linked each one of those items to the bomb. So I've now set those items up on the screen. Now to make your life easier, you can just like I've been saying throughout, you don't have to do the so it's a, like a clock. You could just do it that it's two routes. You don't have to do the four, yeah. But I've set them either side, and you'll see some of them are slightly lined up differently and the slightly bent tweak but again it still works and they sit inside the ship but they just keep looping at the moment on the on the correct path and that one logic gate that I moved round that's linked to more now you'll see under here I've got all the routes the triggers each one of them got their own set and I've stuck them around the boat so we've got them here around each one have got their right each triggers and sets so they've all done and they loop through until we're ready to go which is all good okay and they're set there on the boat on the screen which is not too bad. So that is them all prepared. So you rerun through that link and set those links. So now what we can do is test this and see how this works because all these four buttons are linked to it. So let's now test it and see what happens. So what I've done here is we've got our buttons that move the ships around and reset them, but these four are now triggered to those single uh, logic gates. Yeah, and when we just close those gates, that will set the buttons off, and now we have. The buttons triggered so in my next two clips I'm going to show you how to automatically activate that trigger and that is going to be based on you collecting uh, some components which will then unlock the cannons on the boat and then once you've shot enough targets it's going to automatically trigger these uh, broadside attacks okay I'm 
Well, I hope you like this clip. I hope you found it useful. I hope you can incorporate this type of effect. Here you can see the fire going across. Yeah, I'm going to try and post the next two clips at the same time so you can follow all this in one go. And like I say, give this a go. It's the it's the daddy of a clip. But once I tell you, I'm going to do a full clip of the game being played. It is a brilliant game and you can make it all under these clips. Yeah, so please don't forget to like these clips. I've got more coming. Uh, thanks for all your support and all your feedback. Really good. So um, many thanks and I'll speak to you soon. See you later, guys. Bye.